Hey everyone, I'm back with another video based on the Facebook Marketplace and what I've picked up. And I might consider doing a series of this if it's uh, demanded, but I just want to get this video out of the way. Now, the last video I did, the first video I ever did for this was for the Sega Dreamcast, and, which is this one. And I have, like, cleaned up that black mark and have, like, get a nice clean. It still needs a bit more tweaking to it, but... It does actually read disc. It does power on. It does work. So, but I'm still kind of bummed that I couldn't pay twenty dollars for the set. But it is what it is. Anyways, this one is for something that actually doesn't appear often in where I'm living in New England, which is Commodore computer stuff. Now that's going to be the subject for this video. Now. The listing that I found, and I always look to try to see what good deals I can find for Commodore stuff because those things, even as like for broken or parts, like even a broken Commodore 64 can fetch up to as much as $100 or even more on eBay, plus the uh, shipping that they have to put into it. Not to mention the sales tax you have, the state tax you have to pay, thanks to your beloved conservative Supreme Court, but I'm not going to get off topic. But anyways, that's why you always want to look for local deals. Thus, the Facebook Marketplace and other apps. But anyways, this one I found a listing for a bunch of Commodore stuff from a lady named Paula located in Lowell, which I actually am familiar with Lowell because I actually graduated from a UMass Lowell a couple of, uh, a couple of years ago. And, um... Initially, she was looking for $400. Now, the pictures I saw were for a couple of uh, computer keyboards as well as a few other, like, uh, hookups and such, as well as what it looks like to be a Commodore monitor, which I rarely see in these parts. If you're in, like, down south and mid-east like down south like texas or something you, yeah that's gonna be very common but here in massachusetts or in new or in new england for that matter it doesn't come up often and even when it does they command high prices that i'm just not comfortable with i'm still trying to find like a good deal for a Philips cdi but i'll explain that some other time so the lady wanted four hundred dollars for all this she just wanted to get rid of it so she didn't know whether or not they worked. So I initially threw in an offer for $150 because I have no I had no idea how much like work I would need to do to those uh systems to get them uh running, how much it's going to set me back. And it was not like a lowball thing. I actually made that explicitly clear with her why I made her that offer. I thought that was reasonably fair. But then she actually came down from four hundred to two hundred dollars, which to me two hundred fifty dollars, and so I was able to work from there. And I then offer one hundred eighty dollars. Then, like I said to her, if you can take two hundred dollars, then I will be able to pick them up from you in a couple of days. And she agreed to it. So that was a good and bad thing for me. The good thing is, I'm getting Commodore stuff for the first time. The other side is just $200 for something I don't know if they're going to work. And I was feeling kind of like um, nervous on the drive there. And the location of where I had to go to was actually pretty familiar to me because that's where I used to work at one of the market basket stores in Lowell. So anyways, um... She wasn't at home, but her husband, whose name I cannot remember, I'm really sorry if I forget your, I forgot his name, but he was there and he was actually really nice to me. He actually talked to me a bit like uh, that he actually went through those systems and actually tested them to make sure they were working and he said they powered up on and they work fine. And we got, and of course we get into a little bit of like a talking of like these uh, Commodore computers. It's like how they were kind of dated by the time they came out in the 80s, even though they sold like hotcakes. Now, for something of Commodore to sell like hotcakes, you would think they'd be very common these day, 
these days to pick up, much like the PlayStation 2, but I digress. Anyways, I see the stuff, and initially, like, trying to carry them, it's just, they were actually pretty heavy, and although I've been lacking a bit in, like, muscles, which I have been trying to uh, build back up uh, recently, but even then, they're still pretty heavy, and um, I managed to secure them in my truck, Real nice. I was actually more concerned about the monitor because I didn't want there to be a crack on it during the transportation. And luckily for me, no uh, damages were caused because of it. So now I can actually show you what they are. First off is this. Big beast. Yeah, this is the Commodore 1702 monitor, which, from what I've been told, is uh, really nice and sought after. Now, this thing alone is my money back, plus more. And I don't think I, I will not sell this on eBay because I don't really want to pay the shipping for it. Because I know what how much I had to put in to get these CRTs shipped. And not just this, but typically any CRTs that are big that you have to ship, they're not going to be cheap. And that's why they have those prices on eBay, just so you know. And yeah, this is like pretty heavy. And I did like power this on to see if it works and it actually runs. It actually has the uh, Audio Luma Chroma connectors, which I kind of have to get used to now, but and it's even still got this panel, which I'm really thankful for. And it's a bit dusty, but I'll uh, clean that up and such. And I actually did uh, test like uh, an NES uh, system I was like uh, fixing up, and I played Shatterhand on it, and the pixels actually look very crisp. I've... I mean, this is like as close as I'm going to get to a uh, Sony PVM right now, which I'm hoping to find one of these days. But, yeah, this works. Now, if I can set this up good. All right, so the next thing is this. That's right, a Commodore 64 keyboard. I never thought I would get my hands on one of these, especially for the price that I picked up. And I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to uh, sell this. I might actually end up keeping it because I've already made my money back on this monitor. So that's uh, really nice. And I have like a power this on with the power supply, which they did came with, by the way, a very, uh, that's one other thing I was concerned about. I was concerned whether or not these were gonna come with their original power cables, which they do. And they're both of them, they're the brick ones because they had to build them into the system to be bigger than what this looks like. And, um, I tried to test this as well, test this as well as the Commodore VIC-20. Yes, I do have a VIC-20 right here. And this does power on as well with its uh, power adapter. Now, unfortunately, I can't really test these properly on this uh, monitor or whatever uh, CRTs I have right now. Two reasons. One, uh, it didn't come with the original RF uh, cable it was originally bundled with, with either the VIC-20 or the 64. And second, the cable that I do have, which is labeled with a very old tape of TV, I tried to plug this in the Commodore 64 and plug into the TV here, but unfortunately, this video cable right here one of the solder points got disconnected and the wire came off, so. And I really don't feel like going into it trying to fix it. I might, but I'll probably have to buy a replacement, which I was hoping I wasn't going to do because I thought, that, like after that broke, I, th I thought to myself, maybe I could use a Sega Genesis Model 1 AV cable to see if that works. After all, they... Though that cable as well as the Sega Genesis one does fit in the serial port, but unfortunately 
it doesn't work or at least I couldn't get a stable picture on it so I might have to buy a replacement cable that will be compatible with both the C64 and the VIC-20 so I'm kind of disappointed about that but let me set these aside because there's more to this lot next I have a very heavy 1541 disk drive and the reason this is heavy is because they built the power supply into this. Now, I haven't really tested this uh, out yet for myself, but, well, I can't really anyways because um, given the circumstances here. But initially when I carried this, I was like, yeah, that's really heavy. But yeah, you can see it's a bit like, it's pretty dirty, but I'll be able to clean it. and. Thank goodness um, none of these look like they're yellowed or anything like that. Because I think this is the original color of the 64, despite what the 8-bit guy might tell you. And I have seen his uh, videos, and I really do love them. But sometimes I kind of have to blame him and a couple of others for inflating the prices of these systems, especially when they're broken. But anyways... Another thing I got was the Commodore Matrix printer. Now, this uses a paper, like, you know, those kind of papers that have the holes on uh, both sides. I have actually not seen those since, like, the turn of the new millennium. And I remember in my family, we would use those uh, papers for making signs for, like, uh, someone's birthday and such. I remember that being kind of fun. So, yeah. It's like, I haven't seen paper like that in years. It's just incredible. So I don't know, I don't know whether or not this works, even though Paula's husband told me that they all work fine. But I'll have to give that a shot on my end when I get the appropriate AV cable. So, other things I got are the Commodore cassette player, as well as a game joystick. And there's a old uh, crusty tape that says joy so I once again I gotta test this out and again all this needs cleaning so here are the power supplies that came with it I imagine one of the power supplies is for the printer, or maybe for the the disk drive, I'm not sure, and all the extra cables that I need. I think this goes for the disk drive, although you can't see it right now because it's on top of this, and I have to work with my cell phone. But that's not all. There's more. If I can get this tub here, he was very, the, the her husband was actually very grateful enough to include instruction manuals for all these systems, which, thank God, because I thought I was going to have to look up on the internet for a PDF file for all these, which I imagine they do exist, but I prefer to have these uh, physically in person on me, so that's going to be quite some uh, reading, which, hey, I'm an English major, so I'm used to it. And there was also some games. Well, first of all, there's the cassettes, which the old sticker says from like a Zayre, Z-A-Y-R-E. I've actually never heard that story. I imagine it was like kind of like a common story like in New England or something. And these are like a, like a manual for like a system. Oh yeah, I think this is for like a Wang. Uh, I've actually heard of this company before. Yeah, Wang uh, Company, Wang Professional Computer Series. So I think that was like a guide to like learning uh, computers and such back then. And I got the games, of course. There's Top Gun. Don't know whether or not I'm going to see that new film. I got Deceptor Advantage. Wargle. Spy Hunter. 
Slinky. Master type. Boulder Dash. Spy versus Spy, which I've actually heard was pretty fun. Let me get this out of the way. And the world's greatest baseball game, though that might be a subject to debate. And it's like for like uh, like product specifications for like a catalog or something. And the last thing in this box, I mean the tub, is computer paper, the matrix paper that goes with the printer. So this will be fun trying to learn the ins and outs of. So this is all of the Commodore stuff that I picked up for a whopping $200. Which, now looking at it, I'm actually glad I went with this because I was ner- I, like I said, I was nervous at first. Actually, now that I look at it, it, there might be a bit of yellowing, which is kind of unfortunate. I mean, if I was in a place like Texas, I would have plenty of sunlight daily, but in New England, during the winter time, yeah, no. And, I, and just because it's sunny, very bright and sunny outside, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can use it for conditions of retro grind because it's still cold outside. And we did have one weekend where it was just warm up to like 70 degrees. I kid you not. But we won't see that until spring. But anyways, um, if you're like really don't want to pick the, one of these up on eBay, especially if it's broken and don't know how much effort it's going to take, I recommend looking locally on the marketplace like either Facebook marketplace or let go or I can't remember they are I think it was make offer or something and there was like one person like in uh, located in Texas that was on that app make offer which had a bunch of uh, Commodore stuff similar to this but I think a bit more and she was asking like $250 but I haven't heard from her back because she hasn't like been active on that item since like last year and I only joined recently it'd be nice to have because she includes shipping but oh well but yeah I do recommend uh, trying to look locally especially if you're, if you're in an area where these don't come up often like in New England and if you see these are for a really low price all bundled especially with a monitor get it so yeah this is going to be sold to get my money back plus more and the Vic 20 yeah, I'm most likely going to sell as well. The Commodore 64? Probably not. Though, I'll see what happens then. So, thank you so very much for joining me for this video. And until the next find, I will catch you all later. Happy hunting.